Anyway, our program tonight is on the barns of Lake County. Um, I know it will be, there will be at least one from Highland Park, which is a delight. Um, our speaker tonight is John Rouse, who's photographed barns in Lake County. He's done over 200 barns with 500 plus images. And in two, 2021, he launched a website to share the agricultural heritage of Lake County and farm life. It is a resource for educators, preservationists, genealogists, families, historical societies, and other organized groups. And at the Lake County Fair about 10, 15 years ago, they had a very interesting statistic. I moved to Highland in this area in 1970. Back then, it was 75% agriculture in, in Lake County and 25% residential. By the time they had gave this stat at the, at the Lake County Fair, it had flipped. It was 75% residential and 25% agriculture. So I'm gonna turn it over to John. Thank you. And he's gonna tell us what he knows. Thank you. Well, welcome everybody on this cold night. I'm not ready for winter, but it's here. Okay, I'm gonna get started. Uh-huh. Not working. Oh, we gotta turn it on. There you go, thank you. Uh, if you have a cell phone, please please turn it off so we're not, you know. and trust me, at the end of the program, I'll remind you to turn it back on because nothing's worse than having to turn it off and three or four days later realize nobody's calling me. I started photographing barns back in late 2014 just for the fun of it. I had no plan to do anything like this at all. And it kind of involved over the years, approximately, I don't know, maybe 2000, what are we, 2022? Maybe 2019 or something. I realized I had almost 100 pictures, and I thought, well, okay, they're all on my computer, none of you get to see them, so that's why I kind of started uh, the website, and once I did that, then I just kept going. Okay, <clears throat> I want to acknowledge some people. Uh, I have a lady from the Benton Township who actually her and her husband drive around all the time looking for barns for me. And that makes my life a lot easier because I'm surprised I haven't wrecked my car trying to <laughs> look for barns when I should be paying more attention to my driving. Okay, there are four presentations. We're doing the uh, Northeast, which is primarily New, uh, Newport, Benton, Zion, and I throw in a few others just because I'm here in the Highland Park. Now, why do I do this? Well, here's a good reason. Here's a barn. It used to be a barn. This barn was handmade with wooden pegs way back when. And apparently, from what they've told me, that at the center of the roof, there was a big peg and there was a little hole. The water got in there and it eroded, eroded that peg. That peg gave in the hole roof came down and uh, this is what's left of it and unfortunately so many of our barns today are, are gone. Ten, ten barns that I have photographed are already gone just just since uh, 2015. This is a photograph of a page of a land plat book. I have access to about 18 of these and in the winter time I go through and I try to identify where that barn is today and then I go all the way back to uh, 1939. Is that right? Oh. <laughs> Are you asking? Yeah, I, I have to think about this. Hey, uh, yeah, 1939. Yeah, before I was born. <laughs> 1939, and try to find it. Now, here in Highland Park, it's almost impossible because Highland Park has been a residential area for a very, very long time, and they just can't draw the maps to the point where you can read uh, who owned that property back then. But you get out into the rural areas like Newport and, and uh, Antioch and some of that, and you can actually go back all the way back to 39 and find out who owned that property all the way to current. Okay, so we're gonna start with Newport Township. 
Otto Hausner. I took this picture one day. It really turned out very nice. And a couple of years later, I wanted to go back and, and, and ask him a question, and I couldn't find him. Hmm. Found out. They tore the barn, the house, and everything down. It's gone. And another reason why I continue doing this. I think I hit the wrong button. Okay, and right near there is the... Uh, I'm sorry, folks. i got to put my glasses on. Down Barn Stables. It's, it's a very large stables out there. Uh, he's been around, I don't know how, he's been there that long, but the barn was built in 1910. And you can see how large it is. It's 127 feet long, and that, that's a very large barn. This is their tack house. Another picture from the barn, and looking through the barn, you see some horses out there. When I came to photograph this, I met a, a carpenter who had just got through rebuilding the hayloft. And he was so proud of it, he insisted I come up and take a picture. So why are barns painted red? Anybody know? Well, a lot of people say it's because they can see them in the snow. Uh, no, 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 that's not the reason. Back in well, the 1700s, back in the east, farmers had to protect the wood. So they would take linseed oil, add some milk to it, and um, they would also add a few other things. And eventually they would add ferrous oxide, which is iron, basically, and that is used to prevent the wood from rotting and insects from eating the wood. Well, so that's why you see so many red barns, because it came tradition. Well, in 1922, Sears and Roebuck realized farmers were buying a lot of red paint, and they wanted to promote farmers, or, you know, encourage them, so they reduced the paint of red to a dollar twenty-two a gallon, and all the other paint was three twenty-five a gallon, or some price like that. So, anyway, that's one of the reasons why barns are painted red. Now, in in Lake County, I have found two or three yellow barns, and one green, so far, and the rest of them are either red, white, or in some case weathered. That I guess is a color, but you see that, and I actually prefer that. The Belly Farm. That's not really much of a real interest, but if you go there, the Millbourne Garden, you have to go past this barn, between the house and the barn to get to it. But what's really interesting about this, and yeah, the people took an old uh, farm instrument and made a garden out, but what's really interesting is, is the house. Mm -hmm. That is a architect. And his brother, I believe, was uh, the one who uh, did the Anner Adler uh, Ranch down on Hunt Club Road. Now, this barn here, it's got many coats of paint. I didn't know who owned it, and I was at the Newport Township. I had some pictures, and the woman says, oh, that's my dad's farm. <laughs> so I finally figured out, I found out who owned it. Here's another farm, uh, this as you can see, isn't it? it's on Millbourne Road. And I can't talk about farms, I can't talk as fast as them. If I'm going too fast, just let me know. Well, barn styles, you'll see quite a few of them, but basically, these are the six ones you see primarily in Lake County. There are others, but these are the ones you see the most. You see the gable in, very common, and the English or Dutch gable. And the only difference between the English and the Dutch, the Dutch has that little curve at the bottom of the roof. This is an apple farm. He, he sells all of his apples right in his driveway for his whole orchard. They were good, too. This is the oldest barn in Lake County. It's up on Russell Road and Kilbourne. Um, the house is gone, but the, the farm is still there. And anyone familiar with Kelly Stables up on 173? He owns that, that land. This is not really a barn per se, but 
The silos were very interesting. Okay, little little history here. I have about ten different stories of connections to Lake County barns. Now this one here is a famous actor, and you're all old enough to know who he is. He was born, I think, in Evanston. His family moved to Libertyville. Uh, he actually worked at the Liberty Theater. He went to Libertyville High School, but he got expelled for rolling his motorcycle through the corridor. Nice guy. His older sister went off to New York to study acting, and she actually became an actor, uh, or actress if you prefer. And when he was 18, uh, the school says uh, he could come back from a suspension, but he says no, and he went to New York to become an actor too. Well, um, he went on. Uh, one of his best friends was Wally Cox. Everybody remember about Wally Cox? Mr. Peepers. See, all you people here ha have to be older than six, uh, 45 in order to know all these people I'm talking about. Mr. Peepers. Uh, well, anyway, this man uh, became a very famous actor, quite famous, and you all know him. Uh, he's won two Oscars. And um, his sister, uh, younger sister, never married. But his family had moved, when he left, had moved to uh, Munderline and bought a farm called Penny Polk. And uh, even though they left that farm, they still owned it. And so this actor uh, told his sister she could live there until she died, and she did. Well, when he came back, he stayed in an apartment above the barn. And that man was Marlon Brando. So a lot of you already knew that, but please bear with me if you've heard it before. Okay, this is the Duffy farm. Well, it, it was the Duffy farm, now it's the wood farm. Prince farm, big farm. I almost didn't see it uh, because I was always driving from the west to the east. But they tore out that bridge on, on uh, Wadsworth Road to do some repair. So I got there and I turned around and came back and then I saw it because of the angle. And this was the Prince Farm, big barn there, and uh, as you can see, it's very large. And it also had the smaller barn, I don't know why, you know, but that Prince Farm is about 600 acres, and it was also the Temple Smith, or the Lipizzans. He is the third largest landowner in uh, Lake County. Most people never see this barn. And surprising because when I talk to members of the Wadsworth uh, Historical Society, no, we don't worry. Well, next time you pull into your parking lot, look through the bushes. It's right there. <laughs> it's funny how people don't register, but that's a little small barn right there behind a the house and right off of Wadsworth Road, right past as soon as you cross the railroad track. This is the Kaiser Farm. I like this picture mainly because when I first started shooting I just would shoot the barns. And today I tend to back up and try to add more interest to the farm and this was one of them that just added a little bit more interest than just shooting the barn itself. Okay, here's another famous person, heavyweight champion in the world. He, he won, he, he fought Jack Dempsey in 1926. He won the heavyweight champion. Um, it was one of those, uh, nobody got knocked down, but, or knocked out, but he won anyway. And he had a rematch in 1927, so he had to train. Well, he wound up training at the Green, at Cedar Green Farm in Fox Lake. And that's where he spent the summer training for the 1927 farm, uh, uh, match, and he won that one as well. Him and Jack Dennis became very close friends until Jack died many years later. Oh. His name, by the way, is Gene Tooney, T-U-N-N-E-Y. Handsome guy, wasn't he? Yeah. Never got knocked out in all of his matches. Wells Brothers, I found out uh, this This is taken from my vet's house. It was, it's from, I was on Delaney, Dilly Road, and that barn was on 41. And uh, I found out later that they never owned that farm. They farmed it for years, but they only rented the property. So, anyway, it was up for sale. I contacted the realtor to see if I could photograph it, and he got permission, and he actually went out there, and he actually took me inside the barn. It was an old, it was an old uh, uh, dairy farm, as you can tell from this picture. 
Uh, currently now, it's owned by a landscape company. And uh, I don't know what they're doing with it, but I never, I looked around there, I couldn't figure out where they were farming because this is all wetlands back here and I'm sure they didn't farm that, so maybe it was across the road because there really wasn't much land around this. He took me up in the attic, or hayloft I should call it. Okay, everybody know who this is? Yeah. Well, if you're under, younger than 45 you might not know. This was a radio personality and a TV personality. I, my mother and I would, and my sisters would sit and watch him every Saturday night or Sunday night, whatever it was on, and uh, we liked him. And everybody remember Rochester and Mary Livingston? Mm -hmm. So if you're younger than 45, you might not know. Okay, this is the only brick barn I have found in Lake County. Uh, actually, that's not true. This neighbor's got a brick barn, too. It's right there on Wadsworth Road. You can't see from this picture, I don't believe, but there's sheep behind there. Someone asked about these pictures of quilts. I, I don't know the history behind that. It started up in, in Wisconsin, and some people down here did it too. There's tours related to barn quilts. Yeah, I know. Anyway, a year or two later, I was coming back from shooting up in the Wadsworth area, and I went past there, and all these sheep were in his site. And so I stopped and photographed it just to give more interest to the story. If you've got the book Barnes of Lake County, written by Nancy Shoemaker or whatever, that one. Sure. Sure. Uh, we this, actually have copies of that. Yes, a lot of people do. And this is one of the barns that, that uh, she uh, talked about in, in her book. The Kelly Stables is a big, I think it's probably one of the largest ones that I've photographed so far, and that's up there on 173. And he used to own the uh, Patch 22. Well, some people already know all the history here and uh, got a divorce and he got this and she got that and not much more can be said but anyway he owns that property up on on um, that I said was the oldest barn okay I'm not going to tell you who this person is because she's French and I can't pronounce her first or last name <laughs> that too uh, but anyway uh, she's got a, a horse there and she had some chickens and lo and behold I turned around and guess what I saw? Everybody loves this picture. <laughs> okay. Janet Elpers is, is like I said from uh, Elpers, I'm sorry, uh, is from uh, Benton Harbor and or Benton Township and she is one of my barn locators. And she told me the story about the 36th and 35th president of the United States. And as she's telling me the story, I couldn't quite figure it out. She said that the 36th president gave a pony to the daughter of the 35th president. So where's the connection to Lake County? I mean, the man's from Texas. You would think he'd get his horse from Texas, wouldn't you? Well, Jean Carney, up on Delaney Road, bought a pony from his neighbor for his kids. Well, kids grow up, they lose interest. There was a farmer from uh, Virginia who was married to a girl from Wattsworth, and he came up to buy some cattle and horses from Gene Carney. He saw the pony and he bought it. He took it back to Virginia, and the 36th president of the United States bought that pony and gave to the daughter on her fifth birthday of Jack Kennedy, Caroline. Of course, the 36th president was vice president at that time, and anybody remember the name of that pony? Macaroni. Macaroni. You know, I can tell that, and a lot of people remember that. And you think about it, it was on all the papers, it was on Time Magazine, <laughs> Newsweek, whatever. And there's there's his farm. He's, this is Frank now, that's his son, and he still raises horses and cattle right there on Delaney Road. Uh, that's one of those harness things, and he's, he had it out there for sale. Or I guess he sold it. Here's the other barn, which is right next. It's, it's on Cashmere Road. And it actually was owned by the Cashmere farmer who owns several plots in that area. And uh, I have a feeling he built both of those barns because these are the only two brick barns that I've seen in Lake County. Down 
at the end is the High Hills Stables, and from the looks, it looks like it's abandoned, but it's it's in pretty good shape. I don't know when it uh, went out of business. What is that? York House Road? No, Town Line Road. This is this isn't really. There's no barn there. There's some metal buildings, but to me, it's a farm. And they raise pumpkins, and this is every year. You know, they they put on this big pumpkin thing, and the school buses come out, and they give them rides and all that sort of stuff. And uh, so, my presentation is barns, farms, silos, and stables. So legally, this is still a farm. Okay, in Lake Zurich, Rand Road veers off and goes downtown. If you're coming from the south going north at a stoplight, it takes Old Rand Road. If up until recently, it was all wooded and thickets in there. If you went back there, there was the foundation of an old barn and house. The owner of that property moved to Lamar, Missouri. I had to look that up because I didn't know where that was. And they bought a, no, not a motel, they bought a hotel. They didn't have motels back then. Um, but anyway, they moved there when their youngest daughter was 10. When she turned 20, she married a young man that she met. And in her eighth month of pregnancy, she caught typhoid and she, she and the baby were lost. That man was a lawman, he was a buffalo hunter, he was a hotel operator, he was a brothel housekeeper, uh, he was a gambler. That man was wider. So there's a connection to Lake County. That's the picture on the right. Doc Holliday's on the left. And if you're younger than 45, you never heard of White Herb. This is one of my, I think one of my favorite pictures. I probably got four or five that I really like, but I just, I just like this one. It just gives me that nice warm feeling. I had to go back there ten times because they were never home for me to get permission to shoot. I never shoot without permission. I don't ask for written permission, that's why I can't sell the pictures. If I ask for permission, I probably only have more than 40 pictures. But when I ask if I could shoot, oh sure, go ahead. Uh, the guy who owns this farm, uh, his grandfather had it. His grandfather actually sort of raised him. Apparently, his mother must have been the daughter because he has a different last name. Uh, and he was moving to Tennessee and he wanted to take some barn wood so he can put it into his den or something. And I thought he was going to tear it down from his barn. Uh, but this was a, another probably a maintenance shed or something. This was the uh, milk, milk house by the captain. Big barn. He wanted me to sh see his barn too so I went inside and shot it and I tell you it's really hard to shoot in a barn where it's not much light but I mean Oop, I'm gonna back up if you are on 173 coming from Hunt Club Road heading east you cross 94 and you can see the back of that barn not anymore it's just all Beams, he took all the lumber <laughs> at them. Anyone heard of Fool Pep? I knew. Back in the 1920s, Quaker Oats built in Libertyville four big chicken coops. And they used that for a research center to develop chicken feed from their oat products, byproducts. <coughs> So they wanted to promote this, so they hired this radio personality, Chuck McKee from Oklahoma. He came up and he says, well, if I'm going to have to do this, i got to know about farming. So he, he stayed in the farmhouse on this land. They actually put the radio station in the barn. And his program was a quiz show, farm quiz show. And if you sent in a, qu a, a quiz and they used it, you got a gift certificate for 100 pounds of full pep chicken feed. Well, uh, if you're on Butterfield in Libertyville going north, on the right hand side there's a big open field and there's a, I think a junior high back there. 
Can you picture that? Anyway, right across the street on, on Lake Street is where this is. You can't see it from the road because there's too many trees and stuff there. But the owner uh, bought this place and she has got letters from people who used to go and listen to his program, Chuck McGee's program, and uh, uh, sent her pictures of their parents and stuff going in there. The, the fathers were all in suits and hats, which they did back in those days. No, they never went, went to anything without that. Uh, you can't get a man to wear a tie these days. <laughs> uh, but anyway, that full pep, uh, if you go to the website, they actually have some recordings that you can listen to. And it's, it's really kind of fun to listen to some of that stuff back then. Right next door, I found this by mis just by accident. I happened to look. Is there a barn back there? Sure enough, I pulled in there and there was. And there was this big barn. And this is the Fat Cat Rescue. And they've rescued cats all over Lake County and Cook County. And if you happen to like cats but don't want to own one, you can actually go up there and sit there and pet cats all day long. <laughs> and people do. People actually come up and, and sit there. Now, so they actually have rooms where there are cats that are, that are you can't pet, they're too mean, whatever, and they keep them separate. But these cats here, they just, you know, it's their home. They go anywhere they want. They have a huge backyard where they can just walk around, and they're actually expanding it to a, a, a property right next to them. They uh, estimate they can handle, I forget how many cat, cats they feel that they can handle. But anyway, if you ever, ever have the desire, just go up there and sit there and pet cats. This is the Adams Family Farm, and he must have been very popular or whatever because they actually named the road after him. Uh, it would be a shame if all these farmers were to, bars were to disappear. Uh, this is, I, I was heading up to Russell Road on, on Hunt Club, and I spotted this, and I pulled in, and he had just died. The son and son in law, or the daughter and son in law, are now running the farm. And it's a pretty good sized barn. It was it must have been a dairy farm at the beginning. Um, you pull in and you get this long driveway up to his house. And it was the milk house. That driveway is so long, he actually put Mark's road sign up there. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to talk about it. This everybody knows who the dancing horses are, don't you? The Lipisons. And of course, you probably have read about it, you know the history, probably know it better than I do. Uh, they don't normally allow you to photograph there, but they had a sick horse where it was going to require some real expensive surgery. So they opened it up to photographers for four hours to come in and shoot uh, in, in the main stables and uh, also during the, the practice of uh, the training and stuff. And so I was one of the lucky ones who spent the money to do this. And uh, uh, there are more barns on the property, but I, I can't get to them. I asked. They told me how much they charged me, and I said, no, thank you. Now, do you know that the horses are born black? Everybody know that? Well, these people are no fun. They know everything. <laughs> <clears throat> and this is a little barn that I, was, I shot from where I was standing. Um, Earlier I showed you the Prince Farm, where I pulled in and there were two guys talking. One guy left and the other says, can I help you? And I told him, yeah, hey, I'll take all the pictures you want. He says, oh, I know all about them. I was the vet for 40 years for the Liposons. And he told me some things that he says I can't repeat. And uh, he was staying there in, in the house until his, his house was finished in Florida where he was moving. That may not have been a smart move on his part, but he <laughs> moved to Florida. But that, uh, that Prince Farm, is ne it was 600 acres, and it was all sold to Temple Farm, I don't know when, but a long time ago. I just, just like this picture. And he was out for his daily run. This is one of those barns way off in thing that I was able to shoot with a long tail photo lens. Here's another piece of property that's off of 173 that the Livermore uh, farm is now part of the temple thing. The barn itself is gone, the silos there and 
I guess maintenance shed or something is still there. Uh, the Polk Farm, if you're on Wadsworth Road in the summertime and you drive down um, uh, Wadsworth Road, or is that Wadsworth Road? No, it's, uh, is it Millbourne Road? Okay. Anyway, uh, it's it's where uh, uh, Temple Farm raises uh, crops and they, they sell the uh, vegetables. It's a vegetable market now. They have chickens, they have eggs and stuff like that. Uh, I found out that Temple Farm is, is actually three. It's the horses, it's the farm, you know, the growing of wheat and hay and all that, and the vegetables. So it's actually three different things under three different supervision. I didn't know that. This is another barn that's owned by Temple Farm. Janet told me, you know, there's a lot of depression barns around here. And I said, what's a depression barn? She said, well, it's a barn that they built back in the depression. She said, I've gone through the internet and can't find anything. So I tried, I couldn't find anything either. So I sent an email out to all 12 or all 18 historical societies and the Cook Library. Well, Jenny Perry, the, the uh, historian there at Cook Library, sent me an article from 1932 or 33. And with that, I went online and I found 25 articles in the Waukegan well, Sun and the Chicago Tribune about the government buying 500 acres in 17 different states, dividing them into 10 acres, and building a house, a barn, and a uh, uh, milk house and a well. And they would have drawings, and if you if you had a job where you made enough money to pay the electric and the gas and all that, you might be able to buy this plan for thirty years, and but you could grow your own crops and stuff like that, but you couldn't sell anything. And with that, you would get one milk cow, and I thought I read one pig, which doesn't make sense to me, and ten chickens. And I can understand two pigs, so then you can have more. But you have one pig, you eat it, you're gone. So anyway, come to find out, uh, so there were 50 of these things built in Antioch, um, Benton, Newport, Libertyville, so uh, I know of six. I have photographed two or three, three, four. I've, I've done four of them so far. And you'll see one in just a minute. Now remember, these weren't when you read the articles, you can see how bad the government screwed it all up. <laughs> surprise, surprise, surprise. Did they have local carpenters build these things? No, they had the WPA. The WPA are laborers who can dig, you know, trenches and they they built bridges down at Star Rock and all that. But they're not, they're not home builders. That's the barn. <laughs> okay, now. All the barns don't look this way. Some of them are only one level. This one is, I don't know if they added on to it. It's two levels or what. I, I don't really know because I've seen both of these. The houses are one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedrooms, and four bedrooms. So they have different size house. But all the houses, you can look at them. You can tell they're a depression. Um, it's really called subsistence homestead farms. The house, the front, um, what can I say? The... Um, the roof is about this long, on the back it's about this long. So they're not like this, it's different. And you can, you, when you see it, you can tell. Um, all the houses I've photographed so far have all been remodeled, they, they've been expanded on, um, new siding, and they don't look the same. But the barns still look the same. Now, another little story for you. Anyone recognize this lady? Okay, good. <laughs> This is a famous ice skater. She has won more awards than anybody else who's ever skated. There's been some close, but she still holds the record. Three gold medals in three consecutive years. 12 or 14 international medals, Norwegian medals, all sorts of things. In 1940, she gave up competitive, came to the United States, and did, I think it was 13 ice skating movies. Well, her father was a milk, mink farmer in Norway. So naturally she has fondness over that and she always liked to wear mink coats. She also 
in her movies, and she also did that like ice skating, whatever they call it, show on ice or whatever it is. She did that kind of thing back in the, in the 40s, 50s. Uh, she would have make fur around her costumes. Well, one time when she was in Chicago, she heard that the mink, mink, mink farm from which she was getting the stuff was right up here in Wadsworth. So she drove up and met the, the farmer and his wife and they became close friends and she gave him a bell that was made in Sweden but the clap was made in Norway. That lady is Sonia Haney. Isn't it amazing? How many little, little little county of Lake County has some, and the farm itself is gone. This was the horse stable, and behind it is the chicken coop. I don't think I have it here. My wife said I probably shouldn't, but above her garage is her art studio. But that's where they used to skin the mix. And it's a it's a hardwood floor. And if you look hard enough, you can actually see the outline from the oil of the manx that got embedded into that hardwood floor. Very interesting to see that. But uh, today, I, I guess there still is one mink farm somewhere here in Lake County, but I don't know where it is. Someone said one. Legal farm. Okay, we're going to go into Benton Township. How am I doing with that? You're fine. Okay. Benton Township uh, surprisingly has more barns than most of the others. Uh, the Turtle Farm is a very nice looking farm. It's up on, on Kenosha Road. And once again, I'm learning to back up and, and take the picture further away. To, it, it's more interesting than just walking up and taking the side of the building. So the earlier pictures are not as nice, in my opinion. Now it's interesting, one of the things I do in my research is use the Lake County Tax Assessor. I don't care how much you paid for it, I don't care what your taxes are. What I'm looking for in the tax thing, it tells you when the house was built, it tells you when the barn was built, and how big it is. It also tells you any other property that might be on the farm. These farmers should really be looking at that because I've taken these pictures and what they're saying isn't there. And they're probably paying taxes on buildings that no longer stand. Not my place to tell them, but <laughs> anyway. So that's one of my research things is that the land plats. Uh, I also use uh, been verified and a couple other programs that I uh, subscribe to so that I can do research. I just signed up for Ancestry.com, but I haven't learned how to use it, and I'm not sure that I'm getting my money's worth out of it. All depends. We'll see. I'm going to be doing a lot of that this winter. Okay, now here's another one of those homestead barns. You can't really see it here. Uh, the guy said, well, you can walk up there, but I'm not fond of ticks, and mosquitoes, and that sort of stuff. So I just shot it like this. Good enough. <laughs> you got the idea of what it looks like. Now this one here, I really had to adjust the camera. It was so dark. And you can see it was like 4 o'clock in the afternoon. It was so dark with all the trees and stuff. I really had to up the lighting in the camera to get this. But the silo is all covered with, with uh, vines and stuff. Now here's one that's fairly new and in very good shape. Another homestead barn. This is what I see most of the time. And you might be able to get a small pickup in there. You know, okay, now we're going to go to Zion. I'm going to show you a picture of a barn I'll talk about it later. Now, this one here is that a barn? Pretty small. Uh, I can never get the people home. I took this one from the road, which I'm legally allowed to do. It sort of looks like a barn. And if it was, it was probably where they kept the horse carriage or something, and maybe the hay. I can't see any other use for it, and whatever farming was done is no longer being done there. Uh, this farm building here is being well kept, but it's actually on a, um, I forget, it's, it's, oh, it's a construction company. 
uh, I think they've gone out of business, or at least this part, they're no longer doing business in Zion. But that barn is there, and it's in very good shape. Anybody know what that little thing is up here on the barn? Ventilation? Nope. You mean the points? Yep. I thought they put a pulley there so they could... Pull the hay up. up That's right. Mm -hmm. And also kind of keeps the rain off while they're doing that. Some of them are larger than that. But that's, that's really the primary reason is to pull it up. Of course, today farmers use elevators, excavators, whatever you call it. Uh, I just drove by and saw it. Hidden Creek Ranch, it's almost up, uh, almost in Wisconsin. I was just driving by and I pulled in and it's really a, a horse stable, a, a riding stable. I did some research, it had caught fire back in 1919 and the ladies who own it um, kind of sold it, got rid of it after that. So this young family bought it. Um, I shot this next picture at about 11 o'clock in the morning, bright sunny day. But the wife showed me a picture she had taken of that barn at sunset and it was gorgeous. So I told her if she would send it to me, I would put it on the slide and give her credit for it. Three months went by and she never did. So, I photoshopped it. <laughs> you know, I wanted to try and, 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 and have it the way she did. But, I don't know if you can see it from here. Let me think, it doesn't seem to have a... Hey, screwed that up, didn't I? I sure did. I'll go fast forward. Uh, there's a, a horse in the corral there, and I wanted to show that, so I couldn't darken it as much as I wanted to. Most people don't know it, but my camera cut, for instance, hey, you photoshopped that. <laughs> I said, yeah, so. <laughs> it's not in competition. I used to compete, but I've kind of gotten away from it. I just, this is this is my passion now. Get there in a minute. I bet there's a way I could have just gone right to that picture, but I don't know how. I hope everybody in front hasn't gone to sleep yet. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're almost back. Yeah, there we are. So this is now owned by the Perez family, and it's called Hidden, actually it was called Hidden Creek uh, Ranch, and they want to rename it. They've had it for a year and they haven't figured out what to call it, so the sign out front still says Hidden Creek Ranch. And they had this uh, old buggy out there, you know, people do that, they put it in their lawn or whatever, and I had to keep in with the thing, I had to change the sky in order to uh, do that. Well, Keegan Township, um, I've only found one barn there. I looked and stuff, and this one here is on 41, I think. Is that Green Bay Road? 41? 41 is uh, not Green Bay Road. No, 41 is the expressway. 131 or 34? 94 is the expressway. Well, no, 41 going north of Lake Cook Road. Oh, 31? Yeah, it might be. 31? I think I was on 31. Um, it's a barn, and it's been converted into an apartment, and it's owned by the bar uh, guy who owns the bar across the street there. Oh, by the silo people? Yeah. yeah. That was originally a barn, and it's four, four apartments now. Now, this picture's not in O'Kigan. It's in Zion. So... I will make that adjustment. Is that a barn? Who oh, you betcha. It was a barn. Yeah, that's right. It was a barn. <sighs> it's the Zion Revival Center in Zion. And you can't tell from here, so I blew it up, and maybe you can tell. See the rings? That's where they tied the horses. Oh. And it was a stable. Uh, I've asked Janet if they have pictures from the past. She says, yeah, you have to go there. I haven't done that yet. I want to go there and see if they will scan a picture. Let me have a picture so I can show you what this looked like before it became a church. But it's the oldest building in Zion. 
the stable was. How, how old was it? Before I was born. <laughs> okay. That's saying something. Shield. Okay. I don't really know if that was a barn, no, I, a barn or not. Was that a barn? Yeah, I think it was a stable or something at one time. Same picture taken 15 minutes apart. I was playing around with, with Photoshop and I was running the sliders as far as I could go here. I just thought it was kind of neat, so I thought I'd have it just to show you. Okay. Another connection to Lake County. Anybody know this one? Nobody knows this one? Oh, good. I can tell you one. Fitzgerald. Huh? Oh, that Fitzgerald? Oh, who was the one who read it on? Thanks a lot. He doesn't have a famous picture. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. Uh, maybe I should use another one. Um, <laughs> the story. Everyone, everyone want to listen to Paul Harvey? Sure. I loved him. So, he used to say the rest of the story, so this is the rest of the story. <laughs> this young man was a Princeton student, and he was in St. Paul, Minnesota one winter, and this girl, who happened to have been the daughter of the King family from Chicago, was up there, and they had a mutual attraction. And they dated and stuff. He came down by train twice to visit her at the King compound, which was in Lake Forest, that's another, I'll tell you a little more story about that. And uh, on the second time he came down, the father took him aside and said, Young man, poor boys should not have aspirations to marry young, rich girls. Well, a couple months later, she broke up with him, and he was devastated. So Fitzgerald joined the Army in, in, in World War I. All right. And he wrote the great Gatsby and used her as his inspiration, and that farm, the King Farm. And uh, she got married four times, divorced four times. I don't. I know he got married once. I never really looked up his history, but uh, anyway, he used her for a couple of others, and he was really in love with her. But maybe it's a good thing it didn't work out for him. The King family. I just saw in the real estate thing that the King family home was just sold for millions of dollars. And the young couple that bought it says they're going to restore it back to its day and have lots of parties. <laughs> I don't think any of us here will probably be invited, but anyway, that that's uh, right right there in Lake Forest. I do have one. Okay, there, there's a picture of the house that was just sold, 47 acres, Lake Forest. The only reason I knew about it or was anything about it was because of the stable. And uh, and there's a house right there beside it, and that was part of the King compound, uh, the compound, his, his estate. See, I was in the military's compound. West Deerfield. Well, if it hadn't been for the Highland Park Historical Society, I would never have found a barn in Deerfield. But there is one. Actually, there's more than one. But this is the only one I knew about before this presentation. This is on Ridge Road, um, and, and from what the woman told me, when they bought the, the, the property, uh, the barn was there, and she wanted to tear it down, but her husband says, no, no, because they were going to build a house, and he wanted to use the barn to store the lumber. Well, when the house was being built, he also added a new roof, and then she knew right then they were getting rid of the barn, <laughs> and he wanted a pony, or his son wanted, wanted a pony or something, and so it was in there for a while. And so the bar still stands there, and uh, it's, uh, it's, I'm not really sure, I mean, look here. I can't tell what it's made out of. It looks like to me it's brick with some plaster that's over it. In, or as I was, oh, Maureen, that's Highland Park, right? Mm -hmm. I found another barn in Highland Park. Unfortunately, uh, it just sold for $16 million or something. Every building in there, including the barn, is brick. And I pulled in, there were like no trespassing signs over. But there were like 20 maintenance people in there, so I went in. 
I met the guy who was in charge, and he told me that uh, all these people here are tuck pointing the thing, and they're also building this big new barn that's going to be used for dances and stuff like that. I thought maybe they were turning this into a, a writing stable because there's so much land there. Uh uh. This is all theirs for their pleasure. The farmer or the man who owned it before wouldn't sell it to anyone unless they promised not to subdivide it. So he gave me an email address or a text, I can't remember which. Yeah, email, and I emailed him and asked him permission to shoot, and they never responded, so I don't know. Now this is actually in Highland Park. This is a brick barn, 100%. <laughs> you wouldn't know it from looking at it. Uh, the owner of the house next door is from the old country. He's probably about 90 something. And he knew the guy who lived here. This, this barn is in back of a church. And they wanted to tear the barn down, but the uh, village won't let him. The story behind this is the Duffy used to take the train down to Chicago and buy cakes of whiskey, bring them back on the train, and uh, wife, kids, somebody met him there with a wagon, and he'd pick up the barrels and put it in the wagon and take it to that barn and keep it overnight. Next day, he'd get in the wagon and haul it up to high, Highwood. Why? Highland Park was a dry city and yes. Highwood high wasn't. <laughs> I'm not done. Pretty good. So there you can see part of the brick. It's so where is this approximately? Lower Street, uh, just before you go under the railroad tracks. If you, if like you're in the alley? Yes. Okay. Yeah. The alley is a T. It, it goes, what is it? That center is, is the street above. What's the central, street? Central. The central. Central and then lower. So there, there's an alley that runs between there. But this one runs this way, and it tees there, and right where that tee is where it is. So you can go look at it. I will. Okay. Um, I was at a farmer's house one day. It's, it's amazing. Uh, oh, I'm going to back up. I talked to you about Jack Benny. Yes. The only reason I knew about that was one of the ladies I was talking to said her and her sister used to cross Rand Road before Rand Road was as busy as it was to the farm across the street, and they would go to barn dances, and Jack Benny used to play there. And there's a the connection to a barn, because he never lived on a barn. I missed that one. Anyway, he asked me what, what do farmers call a silos where there's no barn, and I don't know, I just call them orphan silos, so I thought that was a nice thing. I talked to the farmers, they don't call them that, they just call them silos. I have shot about 40 of them, I'm not gonna show all of them to you. Uh, there's basically three different kinds. Uh, a lot of them, now this one here is on, God, what's the name of that street? It's where Delaney crosses, whatever that street is there. Is that, is that 41? 43? And, oh, I think it is by 41. I think yeah. I've seen this one. Yeah. And then I was, this one's over by Fairfield someplace, right, right during pumpkin time. Uh, this one is on Edwards, and... Uh, he had a lot of chickens around it, but I just I couldn't get the right angle to shoot this. The barn's gone, unfortunately, and he's got it up for sale, so he let me come in and shoot it before so. Now this one is in, I believe, Wokigan. Okay. What's interesting about this is the lightning strike. And there's another one up there. It's been hit twice with lightning in it. Pulls out those holes. And this is on, I don't, maybe you can help me. What's that divide where water goes one way in the Lake Michigan and the rest of it goes into the Plains River? What do they call that? Watershed? Is it watershed? Could be. It sits on the hill that, at, on, on that watershed where one side goes to Lake Michigan and the other goes to the Plains River. And uh, her, she's related to Tiny All, which owned the farm, which is now part of uh, Avon, no, Lake Villa Township, 
uh, up on 130, uh, 132 in Fairfield. This big red barn up there, and now they use it. They got a basketball course and baseball and football and everything else there. But it's a big red barn. You won't see it because it's not part of this presentation. This one is in the uh, off of uh, 176, in, of course, in uh, Lake Forest Preserve. I guess they kept it because they typically tear everything down. But this was a yeah, very pretty one. I was in Wandsworth and and I cropped it so they couldn't see the. And I said, anybody know what the title is? No. Really? You don't know where it is? Then I show them this picture. <laughs> oh, it's by the post office. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, this is on St. Mary's Road. One of Janet's friends says, oh, it's in my backyard. So I go to her house, I ring the doorbell, she's not home. I'm looking, there's no silo in her backyard. I look through the trees, oh, there it is. Wait a minute, that's not in her backyard. So I did, came back around, came back out on um, St. Mary's Road and found it. And then I had to go someplace to get permission to shoot it. And it's in good shape except for uh, uh, that I don't know what they call that shoot on the other barn it had deteriorated okay uh, I'm going to do some investigating I found this place called Vintage Aerial Photos out of Massachusetts and they had flown over Lake County and Cook County stuff in 1965 and 1973 so I took a couple of their pictures and I, I put it up on my website and then I wrote them a letter and told them what I was doing and this is what it looked like he says, okay, you can use our pictures, but you have to use the ones with the copyright watermark. So I went through almost 300 area photographs and found 173 of the Lake County barns, farms. Some of them are duplicates. You know, they might be the same farm taken from a different angle. A lot of those farms are no longer here. That I went through there, and I probably it's all in one big gallery, so it takes a while to look at them. I've been thinking about maybe in another lifetime I'll come back and and change that somehow, so if I can identify where they're at and maybe group them together. I only I think I left five up here, but see, I have actually been able to identify some of them. Here's the website. This website right now has a hundred and thirty, you know, hundred and ninety seven barns, five hundred and thirty eight photographs. When I first did it, there were seven galleries, and I just arbitrarily threw them in there. I was at the Newport, I spent a lot of time in Newport uh, Township, and the guy says, Yeah, I'd like to see a presentation. I says, yeah, I just don't know which pictures I'd use. He says, well, we only want to see Newport. Hmm. So, I thought about it for a while, and I went back and took two weeks and gathered them all up and separated them by township. But then, and then, I took 90% of them and replaced the sky electronically. Why? Because I shoot usually between 9 and 3 in a sunny afternoon and the sky is just blue. And it's just boring. So, like like the sunset one, I will take those pictures. It depends if it's if it's got nice clouds in it or something, I will, will leave it alone. But I will replace the skies in almost every one of the pictures just to make the pictures dirty. And it doesn't take away from the barn, it just makes the picture better. So, it takes me 3 seconds to replace this guy. It takes me 10 minutes to figure out which picture to use because if the sun's coming from here and it looks like it's coming from the sky here, uh, -uh you have to you have to match that where the sun is coming and that's not easy to do sometimes. Uh, when I started in the camera club, they told me that I should take pictures of the sky and I said, why? And I said, just take them. Okay. So I started taking pictures of the skies. They also told me to use a wide angle lens because most of my lens, or all my landscape pictures, barns are taken with a wide angle. It makes it look right if you take it with a telephoto. Just doesn't look right. So what else have I got here? Oh, guess what time it is. It's time to turn your phones back on so that uh, when you, three days later, 
if you don't turn it back on, you why aren't I getting phone calls? <laughs> and a lot of people will tell you to turn the phones off. They don't tell you to turn them back on. <laughs> That's true. How'd I do? Hey, not bad. Right on, pretty much right on time. Thank you. Thank you. Does I think. Anybody have questions? Oh come on, nobody. Yeah, hi. I have lots of questions. Okay. I love Barnes. How did you get? Um, and I'm sorry, I had to hit the dinner for my family. Oh, sorry. So I was a little bit late making this one, uh, how you got into this, and also, well, I have two, so how you got into this, and also because I have a concern that these barns are disappearing, if you know about preservation, or just, um, it seems like they're kind of disappearing. Well, okay, first question. I retired in 2005, I had no idea what I was going to do, and I know I didn't want to stay home with Judge Judy, okay? I had retired from Honeywell back in 2005. Five uh, in New Mexico because they moved to Mexico and I wasn't going to go and I had 40 years so I left. Came back here and I was. It wasn't that I didn't want to quit, but I was too poor, so I signed up and, and, and did contract work for a while. I had a contract work in, uh, for this company in Des um, It was a 30-day. I wanted to spend five and a half years there. <laughs> Lucked out. Nice people. Anyway. Um, when, when I almost 70 I, I, I was ready to quit and my boss was 28 years old nice kid <laughs> story you know happens just but almost everybody in there was 30 or under except this one girl she was about 45 she had a, a daughter that was kind of the same kind of condition as my son was so we kind of connected and stuff well, one day she showed me a picture of her husband had taken of a heron that spearheaded a bluegill right through the mouth. Mm -hmm. And he called it eye to eye, and he won local and international awards for that picture. Well, I found out he was president of the local camera club here in Lake County. Well, I'm not much one to work all day and then go home and eat dinner and then go out again. I don't like to do that. I never did. So after I retired, I uh, my first... Their meeting was first Thursday of every month, and I showed up, and they had to fill out a questionnaire, and it said something about websites, and I said, I'm a website designer, and next thing I know, they had six people around me, said, you got to join, you got to take over our website, because he left. <laughs> so I did. And uh, that was fun for many years, but then it became a chore. Matter of fact, I just finally, uh, I, I have two camera club websites that I maintain and some other websites and I've all but all but this one I'm giving them up uh, I'm getting too old I want to I want to concentrate on this and I'll do that but anyway how did I get into it well since I was into photography I spent a lot of money on photography and a lot of money on cameras <laughs> and uh, a lot of money on computers but there was a barn on Lake Street and Washington Street in Grace Lake I'm going to shoot that barn. A month goes by. I'm going to shoot that barn. Two months go by. I'm going to shoot that barn. Six months. A year goes by. I finally says, honey, I'm gonna, uh, today I'm going to do it. I'm going to shoot that barn. And guess what? It wasn't there. They tore it down to build the road to go back to the new train station. That's the first time it's happened to me. There was another time later, the same thing. I'm going to shoot that barn, shoot that barn. And when I finally decided to go do it, it was gone too. So <laughs> don't hesitate. Now, I have photographed 167 barns, 68 today. I, I, before I came here, I shot another barn in Deerfield. And I saw another one in Deerfield. And I talked to the lady that I was shooting, and she says, Yeah, that, that farm has been, or that property has been empty for 10 years, but that barn's in great shape. Why it's in Deerfield it's not sold, I don't know. I will check that out. So, anyway. That's kind of how I got started, but I just started shooting barns, just for the fun of it. I, 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 this was not planned. Somewhere, and I started, my first barn was shot in December 2014. And as you saw up in the beginning, I'm going to have four different presentations. Uh, as you can see, this one took an hour, the others will take pretty much the same thing. So I can't do the whole county, I mean, it's not possible. So. Anyway, um, like I said, 10 of the barns have gone. Um, 
One of them was up in Antioch. I had shot the barn, and I got a call from Ainsley up in uh, Ainsley, yeah, from the Antioch Historical Society. Right, right. And she says, "Hey, John, did you shoot that barn? Yeah. You might want to go back up there. Why? Uh, just go up there. Well, it was only about a ten-minute drive, so I grabbed my camera, threw it in the car, and go up. And guess what? The roof." Wind came in and flattened this part of it. Now the, the barn, the walls are concrete, but the roof is just collapsed, at least one part of it. So that one's shot. Uh, there was a barn on uh, 120, just as you pass 12. I photographed that one, and it was sitting out in the middle of the weeds and everything. I didn't get permission on that shot from the road because there was no mailbox. How are you going to get permission? Um, I had a reason to go back to uh, McHenry. I had my camera in the car, and lo and behold, there's the barn sitting there smoldering. The only thing left was a big corner post. Couldn't find out the fire department, so I don't fire to practice. I don't know how many of you have drive down 120 yes. in the last, I'm going to say 10 years, drive down going from west to east. And on the north side, as you pass, I think it's between Fairfield and Wilson, there was a big barn. Big barn. And a bunch of other barns and a house. And the barn set kind of at an angle, but the whole west side, east east side, all the little bird was gone. Remember that? And this is McVeigh barn. The people who own the uh, uh, Grace Lake feed owned mm -hmm. that. They, they were the children of that family. Well, I met the brother. And I was talking to him one day, and I says, what happened to your barn? He says, you, you really want to know? I says, yeah. He says, I was going to Florida, and a friend of mine came up and says, hey, can I take some barn wood to make a, a, a frames for pictures? Sure, go ahead and take some. Goes to Florida, came back, and that's what he found. Yes. He found out that that friend had taken all the lumber off that side and took it to a flea market and sold it. Mm -hmm. I asked him, uh, did he sell your friend? And the words he used, I can't repeat. So that's another one. not a friend. Right. Yeah. <laughs> the ones I showed you in, in Lake Forest, those have been torn down for uh, uh, million dollar homes. Uh, the Otto Hausner farm, I don't really know why that was torn down. That one was on Dilly's Road almost before you hit Wadsworth Road, and I don't know why they tore that down because there's nothing there. Maybe they just want to tear it down to sell the land. It's hard to say. Are there some tax implications for tearing Of course, down some of course. Houses? That's that's one reason why uh, Temple Smith tears, buys farms, he tears them down. Because land with no buildings on it is taxed at a lower rate than land with buildings. And that's why Temple Smith tears, when he buys up a farm, he tore them almost all of them down. Not all of them. Uh, Oak Valley, is it Oak Valley um, Dairy Farm out in um, Wakanda? Oh, it's a big one. It's, it's a huge dairy farm um, on Bonner Road in. Daryl World, I think it is. Don't ask. People say, did you shoot this? But I don't know. Show me a picture and I'll tell you. I can't. I got 200 bonds. I can't remember. Um, I haven't photographed that one. I thought I photographed it from only part of it from the road, but I haven't really gone on to the property yet. I last, when I called, it was during the pandemic and they, they didn't want strangers coming in. Yeah. Uh, there's three barns that I want to shoot. One uh, is the Pritzker farm, and uh, every time I, I try to get there, they want me to come, but they're either plowing or harvesting or something. Is that the largest farm in Lake County? No. Because you said number three. You just said number two or one. Uh, Oak Valley is the largest. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think. The, the Temple Farm is 800 acres, I believe. Uh, the uh, Oak Valley is 1,600, and I'm trying to remember who the other one is. Well, of course, Lake, Lake County Forest Preserve is the biggest, but uh, I can't remember the other one right off hand. I, I got it in my notes someplace, I just don't remember. No, they don't exactly farm, do they? Who? The Lake County Forest Preserves. No. No, they take it off the... 
Okay. That's the, that's the only thing. I, I, I'm glad. I'm, I, I use those forest preserves a lot. I like to walk them. I ride on bike in there and stuff. And people complain about the taxes that you pay. You don't really pay that much. Uh, my tax rate for forest preserve is about, I'm going to say, under $300 every six months. So $600 a year. That's pretty cheap. But the problem is they don't pay taxes. Just like school district. They don't pay taxes. Churches don't pay taxes. So. Because, because at Lakewood Forest Preserve, there was that gentleman's farm. And I think the Dunn Museum was occupying some of those buildings. Of some For of years. Farms. For years. And that's all gone now, isn't it? I, you know, I heard that they were turning it down, but I don't think they've torn it down yet. I think they tore down the, what was, the barns I think are still there, but the... The museum house? The museum house. Okay. Uh, I think it's going, but I, you know, I haven't, I haven't driven in there to see, to be honest with you. I, I'll be honest, I've been spending so much time up in the Wadsworth, uh, in the Newport and Benton and stuff, photographing there for the last couple of summers. Uh, be surprised how many times I go up and I don't shoot anything. Uh, I, I feel like a failure if I don't shoot three in one day. But, don't you know. Be so tough on yourself. Well, the thing is, I, you don't be surprised how many times I go up to a farmhouse and knock on the door and nobody's there. Now, literally, I probably could shoot, but legally I can't. And I don't want to be standing there with all that camera equipment and some guy come up with a shotgun and says, what the hell are you doing on my property? Mm -hmm. uh, I've only been turned down four times. You know? Um, I mean, one of my really was unhappy I couldn't shoot. The others, they don't really care. I mean, you know, there's nothing special about it. But this one, yeah, it had a lot of stuff on there I would have liked to shot. It, it would have been an interesting photograph. But my concentration starting next year will be Ela and Cuba. Uh, I, this winter I'm building the northwest quadrant and the southeast quadrant. So then I'll have three, but I don't have that many pictures for the uh, Barrington area. And now the Barrington area is going to be a lot of horse barns. I mean, I've already gone through there and I've picked out about 60 that I want to shoot. I sent out 64 letters to property owners about a month and a half ago telling them that I would like to have permission to, and would they contact me to give me, either text me or email me or call me and give me verbal permission to do it. Three out of 64 responded. <laughs> well, I gave it a shot. You know? Yeah, but I have a friend who's writing a book and he's had a similar experience. Oh, yeah. But when he finally got them on the phone, then they knew what it was about, and they were all okay. Well, actually, I, I did that. Two things. I was hoping that they would call, but the other thing is by doing it, when I show up, I don't have to sit there and explain what I'm doing. They already know. They're assuming they remember. <laughs> and who knows? But uh, unfortunately, out of that 64, I got 10 of them back with the wrong address. So I'm not sure <laughs> what happens there. So You had two questions. What was the other question? Well, I'm just oh, about how preservation. The preservation yeah, what's no, not really. Uh, I know uh, there, there's uh, there's one up on 173. Nice lady, her and her husband bought the farm, and it has a nice big thing. But it would cost them somewhere around thirty to forty thousand dollars to fix the roof. They're not farmers. They have no reason to use that barn other than leave their garden tractor in there or something like that. And, and, and that's it. Now, uh, on, on 45 and 120, a little west, um, near the uh, Almond Marsh, uh, there was a nice red barn, silo, white house. And I just happened to see a woman out in, in the yard, and I pulled in there, and it was one of the daughters, three daughters, and she was doing gardening. <clears throat> the farm was being farmed by Bill McNeil. Anybody know Bill McNeil? Any of you drive down Rollins Road around Thanksgiving? I mean, uh, Halloween, and all those pumpkins in, in the front yard, and all the hay sculptures that he makes? He's the largest farmer. He only owns 50 acres, but he farms a lot of land, him and his crew. He also 
is a uh, Hall's Green. He also uh, mows uh, cemeteries and dig graves. His crew. Yeah. He was head of the Farm Bureau for a number of years. Him and Scotty Shorty, Shorty Barner. Oh, okay. They were very close friends. Uh, Bill McNeil was at that time was farming their land, but anyway. Um, I went by there one day and the barn's gone. The silo's still there. The house is still there. And uh, I happened to run into the woman at Kmart or Walmart or someplace, I don't remember. And she said the reason they tore it down was they were renting the house out to a, 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 a Hispanic family who had three kids. And the liability insurance and the fire insurance was really steep. And they decided to tear the barn down. The barn was in decent shape, I mean, from what I can see. They weren't using it. Bill McNeil's not using it. There's nothing stored in there. It's just a place for kids to get hurt. <clears throat> so they tore it down. And that is not uncommon. Now, I told you I don't shoot barns unless I get permission. There was a barn I wanted to shoot really bad. And I had a hard time trying to find the owner. And one day I pulled in and there was three little kids playing, and I knew they, they were Spanish because they spoke Spanish, but they also spoke English. <clears throat> I knocked on the door, and the young mother came, pretty girl, didn't speak a word of English, at least she, she pretended she didn't. So I had my camera, and I go, okay, thank you. <laughs> Legally, I can't, I can't shoot for renters, I have to have the owners, but you know, I don't think anybody's going to take me to court over it, you know. If they don't like it, I take their picture down, you know. So, uh, and I, I'll be honest with you, I find it interesting. I pull up to farms and I want to just go in there for 10 minutes and shoot and I wind up spending two hours talking to the people, you know. It's just the way it is. So anyway, uh, I, I will be building Antioch, Grant, Lake Villa, and Avon because I have to have about the same amount of photographs as I have here. I'm going to be using, in all probability, the same stories because there's only so many stories I have, unless I find some new ones. Uh, Warren Township wanted me to come, but they only wanted me to do Warren. I said, well, that'll take 10 minutes. <laughs> I mean, you don't have a lot of, between Warren, Libertyville, Vernon Hills, Shield, West Deerfield, and Moraine, is that all of them? I have almost as much as I have here. Um, Fremont is the other biggie. Fremont is still pretty rural and it has a lot of farm. So that was Fremont, Wakanda, Hila, and um, Cuba. Now, I was on the phone, house, just, I don't know what I was doing, and I ran across this picture and I looked it up and it, I got that's in Lake County. So I looked on the internet and come to find out it was owned by the Deer Park Park District, <clears throat> and they had bought the Vehe, V-E-H-E, -E, I guess that's how you pronounce it, farm. It was one of the largest farms in that area. That barn is probably three times larger than any barn I photographed yet. Huge barn. And they use it for weddings and conventions. And, stuff. and uh, they said, sure, as long as you, stay, you can shoot outside all you want. It's, it's public property, it's park district. So I went back and I shot, shot it, and uh, it's... It's on the. I don't think I posted it. A lot of times I post the pictures usually within a week or two, but sometimes I'm just busy and it may be a month. And sometimes I find a picture I did the other day that I took a long time ago that I never posted. <laughs> I was. Right now I'm going through all my data trying to make sure that everything's right. <laughs> I'm meeting with the Lake County, this uh, Dunn Museum people, mm -hmm. in uh, November 15th, I think. And my, my reason for this meeting is to talk to them about taking this site and all the data when I'm gone. And that could be tomorrow, it might be five years from now, it might be ten years from now, but I'd hate to see all this go to waste. Not only the, the pictures, but all the data I'm finding, the stories I'm finding. And uh, you guys want to go home, I'll tell you one more. Okay. <clears throat> That farm I was telling you about, the 
Ainsley called me about and told me that was the John Glenn fire. And I'm just, you know, I sometimes I'm just sitting there and I'll do some research on there and I ran across an article in 1907. He bought the farm in 1904. In 1907, a neighbor, uh, a neighbor said, hey, why did, when did you sell your farm? He said, I didn't sell my farm. Well, it's in the paper you sold your farm. So he goes to the bank and it shows here that somebody had the title to the thing and Gate took out a loan against that farm and come to find out he has disappeared to Europe. That he forced his signature on the title and went to the bank and got a loan and according to the bank it's been sold. I, he, he didn't lose his land, I don't know exactly, I, I don't think I could find the stories that says what happened. But apparently this wasn't the first time this guy has pulled that kind of stuff. But can you imagine? Here you get this big farm that you're farming and you find out that it's been sold and you didn't get a dime for it. <laughs> but that was just one of the articles. Uh, 1907. Wow. They talk about that kind of stuff today. Yeah, that's a good claim to Yeah. People. But you know the problem I have with doing research? I'll get the, I'll get the uh, Antioch Gazette. Or journal or something, and here's Bob Hurdle and his wife Mary spent the weekend with their daughter in Schomburg. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, okay, that's world news. <laughs> yeah, I understand, but well, that's not the kind. Society pages. Huh? <laughs> that sounds like other society yeah. pages. Well, in some cases, that's all you get off these things unless something has happened. In Chicago papers, you'd see that, like, Mrs. Smith took her daughter, they will be in Paris for two weeks. So oh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm sure that, that happened, that happened in my hometown, too. I just never read anything that far back, you know. But I, I, I find that, well, okay, because I use, uh, I subscribe to a, a website called uh, newspaper.com, and they go way back mm -hmm. and all over the country. So if I go in and say I'm looking for um, John Glenn, I'll hit 280 hits. So I try to narrow it down, and it's really hard to narrow it down sometimes. But even then, uh, if it's, especially if it's a common, a fairly common name, I, that's a lot trying to find it. And uh, sometimes I just don't feel like spending that kind of time. So I'm not sure how much I'm going to do as far as the history goes. But I I'll give it a hand. You did tip. You were mentioning Ancestry that you subscribed to. A, I know our library, you could come in. And be, I'm not sure what library I could do the same to. thing. I mean, it's not but, good at 2 in the morning when you get an idea. But I'd rather, I'd rather, I'd I'd rather do it at home. Yeah. I told you I have these 18 land plat books. And for the last couple of years, okay, I'm, I'm now looking at this book, and then I, I set that aside and I grab another book. Uh, so, I started scanning them. Now, some of the books scan out really nice, and some don't. But the problem was, not all of the, uh, the books are small. They wouldn't fit on my scanner. Mm. So, I searched and searched on the internet and found a 24 by 17 scanner for 500 bucks. Well, I subscribe to something called Honey. And Honey, you can program it so it will monitor if the price goes up or goes down. And that scanner went from $500 down to $450, down to $350, down to $322, and I bought it. <laughs> and it's actually a very nice scanner. It does a really nice job. So now I can go from book to book to book to book and um, scan the PDF and the software I use will take all those 60 pages of PDF and convert it into one one big PDF so I can just go up and down and it's a lot easier and I can blow it up and stuff um, but sometimes even with that this area here I've given up uh, I've tried to find property here but this has been so residential that the land plat books even if they show the property 
you can't read the writing that's in it. It's just, just not possible. Well, I think we want to thank you for your My time pleasure. tonight. And by the way, um, Holly Rosenberg left a message. She said, thank you, John. I can hardly wait to see your photos of the other Lake County town townships. Uh, she's in, she lives in Kenosha, but she grew up in Niles. Hmm? And she said, much love and thanks. I, I have a feeling she might know you from that point of view. <laughs> I was surprised when she said, much love and thanks. Oh, wow. Some people are just passionate. A little mushy. <laughs> Is, well, thank you. Is Not there right? a way that people can, do you welcome people to contact you with tips if they yes. see? Yes, you, got, you got my card out there, the, the um, phone number and the, the, the phone number of the, uh, there, okay. I got rid of, I got tired of paying $500 a year or $600 a year for it, and I hardly ever use it, I have a cell phone. I don't like cell phones. My kids, grandkids have to tell me how to use it. Yeah, yeah I can program my face. I remember the first time we talked, you said there were no barns in Highland Park, but at least we have one. Uh, yeah. Actually, you have two, but I haven't been there. Right, but still, that's better than zero. Yes, yeah, right. Yeah, that's right. Don't Ridge, be. Ridge Road near Berkeley, the Oppenheims or Oppenheimers have it. It was so agricultural. I haven't looked at it lately, and I think it changed. Hands of quite a piece of property that's on the west side of the room. Tony Oppenheimer's Farmhouse. What? You know that? Yeah. Yeah. Is Oppenheimer, what was it? Yeah. 